the Lord in more than two already. Lord Jesus, in my God, what happened if you get there, but you three, that's then you decide. But let me just, I have this thing and I want to share my own observation and the prayer has agreed with me that we should allow the floor uh, to, to participate in this conversation so that don't you become one-sided and monologue. Let me start by saying something about myself. I, as president of Nigeria Liberal Congress, I went to Hong Kong under the offices of the International Union Confederation to participate in the mass against World Trade Organization. Because we argued then that we are not in one world. And there is no such thing as free trade. Free from who and free for who? These are issues that are often taken for granted. Now, I'm bringing this, this point up because the director of NLC uh, research was talking about workers not being brought on board in the conversation over uh, African AFCTA and the people clamp. And I said, who is going to bring you on board? Our democracy operates in such a way that the people are sometimes reduced to footnote in the process in which they are not supposed to be mere beneficiaries of good governance. We ought to be the drivers of the process. So we are both drivers as well as the end beneficiary of public policy. So if you are waiting for a general state or a liberal minded legislature or a kind hearted executive to evolve you, then you may have to do more waiting. My experience is you have to seize the space. Even the right to sit with your employer to negotiate was not offered on a platter of gold. And I guess this is the heart at the heart of May Day celebration. So Nigerian workers must understand that public policy that affect them, they must assist and create capacity if the state refuse to engage. You create conditions that will make it impossible for the state to proceed, to append signature to documents that has direct profound implications on working people and working lives. <laughs> Number two, I mentioned Hong Kong. Hong Kong was a major beneficiary of export. But as the world economy changes, uh, people with or without abilities are competing. We are having so-called free, uh, free trade zone uh, manufacturing sectors where national laws are not applied. I see some, some part of Nigeria where People asking for free trade zones and so on. Where trade union rights are frozen, and where in some countries prisoners are made to work in production, the international labor movement believe that in a world like that, you can't talk about free trade. And we have to be very, very careful. Number two, I ask my question, just listen to the speakers. How does this African trade agreement relate to World Trade Organization. Because the World Trade, as I understand it, I don't lay claim to any expert. I have been involved in interrogating those who know, because that is what our senior leaders were equipped to know, even to interrogate those who are experts. Is that they are committed to promoting free trade around the world. So when you have free trade within the African continent, does that shut out non-African countries from access to African market, particularly countries that are signatories to World Trade Organization? I think that a couple of issues said that we need to be explained so that we can understand, or I can understand, a little better. Number two, I listened to the custom uh, representative. And he repeatedly used the word custom as a revenue collection agency. Let me share my own ignorance here. I didn't think that custom is about revenue collection. I think custom is about protecting, ensuring that illegal goods, goods become illegal to the extent that our tariff policies and our trade policies decide which goods are importable and which ones are prohibited. If the emphasis is on revenue collection, 
And as our full year cost subsidy this year, we have even exceeded our projection. The level of revenue you collect, in my view, is a reflection of the excess of our dependent on importation. Because you don't import, you don't want to collect tariffs. So, my first assignment to write uh, to, to, to uh, a custom, if I had the power, is not to emphasize revenue collection, is to prohibit importation. Uh, I mean, enforce the tariff policy which are meant to protect local industries. And get a critical balance between aggressively pursuing money from genuine manufacturers that want certain inputs that are not available locally and also aggressively ensuring that prohibited items are not in the country. If we make want to make more money from customs, then we should remove everything from prohibition so that everything can come in and ensure that they pay correct duties and we can collect more revenue, but at us at what cost? That will cost jo uh, lead to job losses, lead to closures, etc., etc., etc. So we do need to understand the primary purpose. In my view, there are things we seem to have uh, taken for for granted. And I think, Master, uh, we should call you Doctor now because I mean you no, you are more sound in terms of uh, the practical reality with regards to production. Uh, movement of goods within the region and so on. I thought if a guy did it, you know, I like to discuss in a level that we workers can understand ourselves. Before I begin to contemplate going to university, I think as a parent, I need to ask how far has my child done in a primary school? Did he do well to merit secondary school? And uh, depending on how he whether he made his work or not, then I will consider whether I should go to university. And looking at him, what, what is his area of, of uh, up, where does he have, seems to have a better attitude in terms of career progression in the future? I would like to ask, before we begin to talk about free trade within Africa, how successful was our Equals Agreement? Because Equals, I understand, it was meant to promote free trade movement of goods and, and persons within West Africa. And what have we seen? The custom man eloquently showed us how under the guise of Equals, many Equals countries who simply don't have production base simply became, by government official policies, particularly in the smaller countries around us, became the doping ground for prohibited goods. They legalized their import into their country, but Nigeria is the destination. And you now have to resort to method which in a democracy are arguable, namely having to evoke the power of the state to decree that we close our borders. How has the common currency worked for Europeans when you look at some of the crises they've had in Greece, and several other, Africa, uh, several other European countries. So me, I don't do things because others are doing it. I have to do something because it suits me. This is the time to borrow the only one word one man use so where I don't want to mention his name so that his disease doesn't affect us. This is the time for Nigeria first. Because the logic of a continental trade, as one of the speakers mentioned, was to have access from Nigeria's point of view Instead of being limited to a market of 200 billion, you will now have access to a market of 1.2 billion. Theoretically, this is fine. If you were confronted with a situation in which you have so much to sell, but you have limited outlet to sell it. So you are now going to a trade agreement so that you can have access to other markets. But I ask us, even I should try hard. And it's a good effort, Mr. President, to wear made in Nigeria because it will be very difficult for you, uh, our textile workers who are committed to protecting textile jobs, to go and be putting t shirt as we used to be as we used to do before. But look beyond your clothes and look at your socks. 
Are they also made in Nigeria? I can see Isa Ademui. I'm looking at his shoes and I'm looking at my own shoes. They do not look like product of Leonard. They don't look like product of Leonard. No, don't help me. I, I, said, I said your shoes are my shoes. I'm not excluding, making excuses. They are neither made in Nigeria. I know, I'm not even sure they are made in Africa. But I use this side because we have so many things in common. We look smallish and we have both work in the Texas Union. So he will not pick offense. In any case, we can afford the mutual physical fight. But every other person, there and here, we are all wearing smuggle shoes. I suspect that the custom officer's uniform is not Nigeria made, and therefore it's smuggle. Now, if we play back, if I were to have access to state information, God knows as a governor of a state, I had the privilege to sit in a meeting of National Economic Council and National Council of States. And I said to our late president, Umaru Musa Yaradwa, I said, government has told Nigeria to a free, to duty-free country. Duty-free in the sense that at the very best, we have the political will to prohibit a number of items, including furnitures, including certain categories of fabric, leather, and several other things. And yet, every Nigerian knows how much you pay to get, um, what do you call it, a container of any of the prohibited items. So the result is that because they are prohibited, Nigeria collects no duties. So the, that's why I call them duty-free. And because of the excess of penetration of these uh, uh, prohibited items, it means that effectively Nigeria is basically a duty-free country. Here we are not an international airport. But even when you buy duty-free items in an international airport, in countries where laws are strictly enforced, when you get to your country, other than the duty allowance, which Nigeria Customs will advertise on arrival. Every other thing you bought are duty free. You want to pay duty on it once you exceed the, the maximum allowance, which is no more than $500, I, I, I suspect. So everybody is smuggling. Police are smuggling uniforms. Nigeria Army is smuggling uniforms. Nigeria Air Force is smuggling uniform. Who is not a smuggler? I told the president then that looking at all of us, the governors, including the president himself, we were all wearing prohibited fabrics and sitting on prohibited furniture. There is room for special, I mean, for frank engagement between victims of incoherent policies and those who churn out those incoherent policies. There is need to find courage to engage those responsible for policies which they have refused to enforce and those who are victims of lack of enforcement or policies that appear to be good on paper. So, my point of departure is, why expand beyond Equus, where we couldn't even manage Equus? And as we speak, middle of last year, we saw Nigerians be forced to South Africa. So, Africans aren't even allowing Africans to set up legitimate businesses in African countries. I have been reading over the past two weeks, Suggestion that we should evacuate Nigerians from Ghana. So the Ghanaians are not tolerating Nigerians, not managing small good goods, but just to participate in the economy in spite of the provisions of ECOWAS. I'm asking myself, in my own ignorance, a very limited knowledge of international trade, that if really this is who we are, what is the theoretical foundation and what is the experience that informed the policy that we should expand for that? So I, I will want our experts to take care, to take note of this. The advantage I have is that if I am wrong, I am not an expert. I don't have to be right. But if I manage to be right, then it's just a miracle. The, in our sub-region, what is their production base? I think Eugenia Masu referred to that. Africa countries that can be said to have a production base. If you are not, if you don't have a manufacturing base, what is it that you seek to move freely within the continent? So people are going to be signatories 
And if you if you if you if you look at those who are who were in a hurry to sign, they are precisely those who have no manufacturing base and no goods to sell within the continent. And I suspect that they do so because they are going to set up free ports and Europe and America, Asia, every other part of the world we we use their ports, they will put their country labels if they want to even disguise it. And, Afri and Nigeria will be the destination. I think that we need to be more sensitive at this time. And I'm happy with the what the director of NSC said about employment and so on. First is that I wanted to shift, shift emphasis away from this, what has for me become very boring statistics about the population of our youth in relation to those of any case, thank God I'm a, a youthful man. That's why I try to look as youthful as I can. And this face cap is helpful in covering the fact that my head is totally bad. Uh, even though I used to use comb when I was uh, uh, in my early thirties and late twenties. Are we actually asking the question? The world we are in now is it world in which it's about the quantity that define the energy? No. In my humble opinion, no. It is the quality of the skills of our youth. So when you refer to qualitative, you just speak to the quantity. And you are silent about the quality. I'm afraid in a world that is knowledge driven, we do need to ask far more fundamental questions. So, and what is the problem? Employers, I'm sure Junior Masur will tell you, because you see, we can find the faults without tracing the route. Let's avoid dealing with consequences and avoid the primary causes. I'm sure that for the Dagote group, it will be cheaper to employ Nigeria engineers, electrical, electronic, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they're even more reliable because they don't have to claim they are going on holidays and they get caught up with a coronavirus lockdown. And I know that by reasons of my personal relationship, you had issues with people who, who travel out because of the lockdown and they couldn't come back and production is waiting because the countries have closed borders. So it is not cheaper for the employer. Now, what is the link between this and the fact that our own colleagues spend one day teaching and three days on strike under the umbrella of ASU? Even at a time you are talking of coronavirus, 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 coronavirus has also created its own industry. He created industry for researchers in universities. He created small-scale industries for the manufacture of... Uh, I'm not like, I'm not about to throw it away, a statement this way. It has created its own industries. But even our own, if we were to decide, given uh, huge employment challenges, to say that our own uh, mask must be Nigeria-made mask. That will create its own medium or micro or whatever name defined. So I think that we need to really ask more practical questions and examine ourselves. I was a governor, and I'm happy that I became one so that nobody can say I don't know what I'm talking about. From what I know now, if I know it then when I was in the NLC, I will fight even harder than I did. Because policies are rolled out without proper consulting those who will be affected. And you know how I got to know uh, Chief well, Alhaji Dangote Aliko was during the economy summit group. I just find that ministers who are political appointees, not based on their background, not based on their line of training, they turn out and pontificate on policies on behalf of the private sector. And if a private sector operative asks radical questions, then you are targeted. So I was in this group, and I was asking the questions that the big business people could not ask. And Ali could not ask me. Then I didn't know who he was. He said, but you are Shomoli. I said, yes. But you seem to know our problem as much as we do. even know it more than us. But you people are always fighting us. I said, yes. I don't like business people. But I just find that I need them for my own enlightened self-interest. Because when public policies or incoherent policies 
or lack of political will to enforce policies lead to factory closures, the first casualty are workers. And the fewer workers I have, the less my strength. The strength of a trade union is a function of the capacity and the viability of the employer that employ the workers. So when it comes to how to help businesses to grow, to create jobs, viable jobs, profitable jobs, we are building our strength to be able to confront. What does it make if I tell you an employer who is trying to decide whether to close or not? I just, I just give him a tomato. So thank God, I will have other days to close my gate. So that all the other provisions in labor law with regards to redundancy payments and so on, I will be free. And we predict that you went on the illegal strike. Just go and sort out somebody at the industrial court. So I, I think that th th these issues, my advice, Mr. President, and I'm very happy that the NSC Deputy President is here and the General Secretary is here. I think we need to organize a platform to engage with ministers, to engage not ministers of state only, ministers themselves, to engage the economic team, including the one appointed by the president, include, uh, engage those managing our Nexim Bank, all of these institutions put in place, so that we can at least talk to each other and understand where people are coming from. So that we don't go and commit ourselves to agreements that will create a problem for, more, for us. Those of us in the Texas Union, you know, we knew. And that's the way you clam for the guy who asked for free money. I am like, you have not properly understood where we are coming from. The Texas industry did not collapse because of shortage of working capital. And I'm happy that we have a, a general master who, as I know now, had a terrible business that was dead to manage in a regime a, a policy regime under which you can smuggle in the very item he was trying to produce at Kaduna, Texas. So, going forward, I read an article somebody wrote today. Since he doesn't like me to measure his name, I'm not going to measure it. Manufacturing Africa. You know, we are not about to reverse the wheel. We don't need uh, neither. Uh, AFC, ETA, etc. We didn't have those when we had Kaduna Textiles Limited, where you were managing director, employing 4,000 Nigerian workers, running 24 hour shift. We didn't need this facility when we had Nospin Nigeria Limited, the British company. We didn't have this before we had Nota Nigeria Textiles, just close to KTL. We didn't have this before we had Notex. We didn't have this to have fine text. We didn't have this to have area and white textiles, without which I will not be here. And this is the product of our four generation political leaders, like Sir Abadu Belu, who rightly felt that it is a shame that we grow so much cotton in the north. But we are not adding value, we are exporting the cotton to Europe. So to create jobs, we need to set up textile factories. That is the history of Kaduna Texas before other people followed. So what has happened that many years later when our politicians have PhDs, they have MSCs, they have all diseases and so on, we, we are beginning to ask, there is nothing that has been said here that translates beyond common sense. I've learned nothing, with all due respect to all those who have spoken. I have learned no new ideas. What is missing, which must exist, is the political will to get this through. And if we don't, we are finished. And I'm happy Amin Suleiman is here. I knew him through fighting an employer in Kano. He was fighting the union for not prolonging the strike. And I was trying to tell him we have to know where to stop it. Otherwise, we will die more than we can chew. So now you are in the parliament. Me, I have aspired as governor. But I have not aspired as a Nigerian. I think that we need to engage Ivo Asu. What are we teaching? Masu will tell you that a Nigeria graduate in chemical engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, is not able to, is not readily employable because of the quality of instructions. Where the man spent six years trying to obtain a BSc, 
because as who has one reason, even the issue of how somebody should be paid, nobody should be paid. You grant the system for six months. So even we labor need to need to need to do self interrogation. Let me conclude by this uh, comment. I. So I think that organized labor, because the issues are the same, what affect the textile industry, affect the leather union, affect the chemical union. NSC, can you remember when you had Machelin, when Nigeria has fewer vehicles on the road? Do we remember that we had Dunlop when Nigeria has fewer trucks on the road? Where is Macheli now? Where is Dunlop now? We are driving more vehicles. Where are the tires coming from, whether tubeless or with tube? Where? My final submission is that you must do what I will call this is the new vocabulary and power outage, no cash. Because, sir, if I'm wrong, educate me. That's why I like to ask these questions. I was trained as a union man never to be intimidated by professors. Because when I share my ignorance, they will be provoked to lecture me properly. Yeah. What, how do we get the textile industry back? So that we can have those 30,000 workers in Kaduna, those 30,000 workers in Kano, in Apapa, in Oshodi, in Isolo, in Portaikot, in Aba, in Onicha, all of these people were producing fabrics. Whether Guinea brocade, none it produces socks, Universal producing towel, Gida Brogo producing a blanket. We can go on and on. I have clear memory. And I saw a bright future for a country that is moving away from exporting to try to produce. We must return there. Why did the industry collapse? Two things. The first is Nigeria going to submit to World Trade Organization free market. And I know it was one and the other Abacha who signed that thing. And if you ask your president, this is the other customs coming and public policy. We prohibited importation of certain fabrics. The coastal people blocked the border. You had about 2,000 trucks of smuggled material that want to come into the country. And I remember in one main day in Lagos, I told President Basojo, thereafter he he granted waiver, very dangerous word, waiver. Waiver means making laws and executing some people from obeying those laws. So which means selective criminality that is legitimate, uh, legitimized. And Baba granted the waiver. Those trucks came in. They went to Kaswakore Kano, and they were enough to feed the Nigerian market for almost a year or a year and a half. That is how uh, Texas Mill, Ikeja, closed down. And the Texas employers clearly had no, no choice but to begin to look at alternative. And eventually they realized it was better to relocate back to China and other places, produce, ship them to Kotonou, and the other airquas, bring them to the Nigerian market. There are some radical questions we need to have to ask. And this is not provoking you against anybody. Me, like Kamal said, the workers are going to lose but they are chain. Having been a governor, having been president of NNC, I have a little more than a chain to lose. So I am not exciting anybody. I can't be free if Nigeria collapses. But we must revisit these issues. We must get power back. Without power, you cannot do NAFT, uh, what do you call it, AFCTA. You cannot do it. You cannot run an economy on generator. It's not possible. Even the statistics are here. I question the integrity of those statistics. 
And so we can go on and on and on and on. Uh, let me just appreciate you, Comrade President. Thank you, sir. And Comrade President of NSC, you are here, and General Secretary. You need to engage on this. Because as you can see, your minimum wage is only on paper. It is. With the combined forces of devaluation arising from foreign exchange crisis, because the contradiction between our monetary policies and our fiscal policies, the ecohelen is enough to create the crisis that we have now. That you want to save money, you save at 1%. 1%. You want to borrow, you borrow at 60 40%. How? So you discourage people from saving and you pry money out of their reach. I don't know which model that is coming from. So you need a holistic interrogation of our industrial policy. And then say how will we fare if this one takes off by January? I suspect it will not. We will have to find political reasons including the all foresee COVID as a basis to ask for more time so that we can do uh, inward uh, searching mm. and put do first thing first before exposing ourselves to a situation that will be very, very costly to new jobs and able to existing jobs. But thank you for this privilege. I, I'm a retiree. I'm not supposed to talk anymore. Thank you very much.